Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about reducing sugars. Um, reducing sugars can only um, really occur if the, um, the hemiacetal form or the cyclic form that we've talked about previously can in fact open up to its open chain uh, aldehyde form. So here I've drawn the hemiacetal form of uh, D ribose, and in fact I drew the beta form of beta D ribose. If I were to go ahead and draw the open chain form, this is essentially going to go backwards, okay, and this will now become the OH at carbon 4. So I now have an aldehyde, and the Fischer projection would look like this. Okay, so because this hemiacetal is not a permanent structure, it's reversible, it can open up to this open chain aldehyde form, and this aldehyde is reactive. Okay, particularly if you wanted to oxidize it, okay, or potentially reduce it. I could treat this with a reducing agent or an oxidizing agent, and uh, it could be um, reacted with. So if I reduce this, let's say with lithium aluminum hydride followed by water workup. The aldehyde, as we've seen before, would simply become reduced. And we could now reduce this aldehyde carbon into an alcohol. So this would become completely reduced sugar. But notice that this, these reagents, lithium aluminum hydride, would only work on the aldehyde form. They would not do anything to this hemiacetal form. So if sugars had the ability to open up to their open chain form, they can be reduced. Likewise, they could potentially be oxidized as well. So instead of treating this with a reducing agent, let's say I treated it with potassium permanganate or some strong oxidizer, I could oxidize this carbon to a carboxylic acid. So what are called free reducing sugars these are sugars that can open up to their open chain aldehyde form. Now, if for some reason this OH group were blocked and that prevented this from opening back up, that would be called a non-reducing sugar, and we'll see that in the next section. So what I've drawn here is sort of a blocked structure of um, our molecule ribose. So notice I've changed that OH group now to a methyl group. So this is like a methyl ether. Technically, this is called an acetal. Okay, recall that the prior structure with just an OH here was called a hemiacetal. This is now a full acetal. This cannot open. So it cannot go backwards and make an aldehyde here because I've now blocked this, instead of being a hydroxyl, is now an ether bond. And because of that, these cannot undergo no oxidation or reduction. Now these types of molecules, these are called glycosides. In a separate uh, uh, video, I'm going to talk about glycoside formation. But this is called a glycosidic bond. And essentially, it's now a, um, a permanent sort of fixture on this molecule. It's, if it were this were a hydrogen, I could go backwards to the open chain form and so on. But when you have a glycosidic group making this now an acetal, cannot open up and therefore would be a non-reducing sugar. So glycosides in general are non-reducing, whereas sugars that can open up, if they have a free hydroxyl here at the anomeric carbon, those would be examples of reducing sugars. All right, so that wraps up our discussion of reducing sugars.